Well, I apologize already. Um, I guess since I didn't call for the offering, I guess this was supposed to be a free day or something, I guess. I don't know. Um, and the hit with a couple unexpected things this morning, too. <clears throat> but so here I am. Um, before I start into this message, um, remember last week, um, <clears throat> Tim announced that I was going to be doing this, and then we had our, the rest of our praise music, and then he called 16 of us up I hear, if you remember, to take a piece of paper, and we all randomly, we didn't get to look at them before we grabbed them, you know. And uh, I got mine, and I looked at it, and it said this. Right after Tim announced that I was going to be delivering a message this week, and I thought, gee, thanks, Tim. And I've had this in my Bible all week. And, uh, and I read that and read it and read it thought about it and I said it's right I'm not and I was reminded in Sunday school class this morning because I was fretting over this and uh, I was told that if God told you to do it he's not going to tell you not to do it so just basically get over it and <laughs> And stop worrying about it because God's going to take care of it. Because even though you may feel like you're not good enough to do it, if God wants you to do it, it will be. So that's where we are. One of our main scriptures we're going to be focusing on today that you can all turn to is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. <clears throat> um. So what I want to share with you today is to um, start with, many of you were not here, then in 2010, uh, August of 2010, uh, approaching 11 years, uh, my mother passed away and left my dad by himself. Um, it was unexpected, I guess would be the best way to say it. And in the nine years following that, um, my dad passed away in um, 2019, also in August, about two days before the day that my mother passed. And um, what I have here is what I've written. <clears throat> um, and I know God inspired me to write this because I hate writing. Um, don't like reading very much, but I really hate writing because I'm terrible at it. But what I want to share with you today is what God revealed to me in what um, I saw my dad go through in those nine years of being without my mom. Okay? And what God has shown me uh, through his scriptures, through the word of God, and um, just, just, just what God showed me in, in that uh, amount of time. So, a little bit about my dad to start with. Uh, he, he farmed all of his life, uh, milk cows, um, quit doing that when I was about four years old. Uh, so fortunately, I got out of that job. Uh, and then my son grew up and got milk cows, and so now I fill in for him when he wants to go on vacation. So I never did, I really didn't get it out of it. I just almost skipped a generation. But uh, he get, then he got out of that, and he still farmed. And then um, sometime in the 1970s, sometime, he got into uh, doing commodity trading. Uh, trading. Uh, and he was pretty good at it. And, but he only did it, uh, like in the winter time, since he didn't have livestock to take care of and, and such like that. Um, he had some extra time, so he, he used his time doing that. And um, <clears throat> one of the um, 
the things that he really enjoyed as far as a hobby goes is he really loved boating. He bought boats, sold boats. We had a boat, a pontoon boat uh, growing up when I was a kid. And uh, he just he just loved going boating. And he just, he just really enjoyed it, like working on boats. And, you know, buying them, fixing them up, and reselling them. So in the nine years um, uh, after my mother passed away, he did what he could to, to keep busy. He did date a woman for a little while. It didn't work out. He continued to, to farm. He continued to do his, his trading and working on his boats, you know, trying to do things to keep himself busy without my mom there. And then one day he came to me when we were working, about the year after my mom died. And um, he said something to me. And he, I could tell he was really down that day. And he came to me and he said, Chris, he says, I, I want to quit farming. And I just, there was words I never thought I'd hear out of his mouth. It's, you know, what he'd done his whole life. And when I asked him why, he said, and if you uh, need a tissue, they're, they're up here, by the way, if you need one, because I might need a couple <laughs> before this is over with. Um, he told me, he says, he says, when he went home from work every day, um, by himself, he says he didn't have anybody to share his day with. He didn't have anybody to tell, to talk to about how the day went. And he said it just made him even sadder to not have somebody to talk to about what he did that day. And, um, and I guess he thought by not farming any anymore that that would take some of the depression away. You know, I, I don't see how that, but that, that was his reasoning. And um, and it just it just made him sadder not to have any talk by talk to. And he thought, well, if I take away something um, that I don't have to talk about, I, but that's what he told me. Anyway, but he continued to do his trading, and he continued to do his, his boats. And, and, um, but he, he wasn't the kind of guy that was out looking for things to do, you know, some place to go, something to, you know, somewhere to be. Um, about the only th time he ever went any place is if me or uh, my brother or sister would call him up and say, "Hey, we're going to go do this. You want to come along?" And that was pretty much it. And he just he just stayed home all the time unless he had to go to the grocery. Um, and he would come to church here with if we were having a dinner or something afterward for a free meal, and then he would come to that. Um, but. Um, so in my dad's world, um, everything that he knew that he, that he grew up doing it was gone. Things that gave him purpose, you know, making a living, uh, being there for my mom, um, and, and those kinds of things. Th those kinds of things were gone. Um, so watching my dad go through these nine years uh, without my mom and just the slow deteriorations and, and, and things going away and, and being taken away. That got me thinking about me and my Christian walk and raising my kids and am I going to be like that when I get to be my dad's age? And <clears throat> so I started writing and it got me thinking about our stages in life. Okay, So that's where I want to go with this. Um, uh, so we're going to look at some different stages of life and we're going to support this all uh, all with scripture okay so the first thing is when we're young when we're little kids okay and when we are young uh, let's, let's face it we don't understand what purpose is um, we are given things to do you know go to school do chores uh, and things like that around the house okay we really don't understand the purpose. We don't we don't look forward, you know. All we're looking forward to is the next baseball game, soccer, you know, things like that. Um, 
we're just out to have fun. Okay, and in regards to in regards to raising kids, um, and I think we need to do, do this a lot more. But with me growing up farming, if you know anything about farming, there is always things to do. Okay, regardless of how old you are, and uh, Alex will testify to that too, I'm sure. Um, but what I've learned uh, raising my kids that way and growing up that way is that parents, you need to teach your kids to work. Okay, we teach them how to read, write, do math, okay, behave themselves. Teaching kids how to work is every bit, is, if not more important. Okay, we teach them to do everything else, okay, but we need to teach them to work. Okay, even if it's just doing chores around, doing dishes, you know, teaching them how to do the laundry, you know, anything like that, okay. Put them at work. Don't let them just sit around, okay? So now that I've said that, everybody between the ages of 8 and 18 hates me right now probably. So, um, yeah, yeah, you tell me. Chase, I love you, brother. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. But really, when we're that age, kids that age, we're really somebody else's purpose in life. You know, our parents, you know. Uh, kids give parents purpose, grandparents, uh, teachers, coaches, uh, maybe occasional uh, emergency room doctor, you know, you never know. But you give, the kids give adults a purpose in life, you know, for raising and teaching them, okay? So it really isn't until our later teens, you know, when we get high school, our teenage years, college, when we start thinking about um, what we want in our future, Okay, what we want to be, what we want to do. Um, start working towards having a purpose of our own in our lives. Okay, like we've got some, you know, people that graduated high school this year, getting ready to go to college. Um, uh, Cameron uh, is going to be a senior this year, right? You're going to be a senior this year. I just put you on the spot, sorry. You know, she's studying and planning. You know, thinking about what's going to happen next year. You know, you start thinking about the future, you know, when you get to be that age, okay? <clears throat> and what were you going to do with your life? You know, thinking about, okay, am I going to get married? Am I going to have children, you know? Uh, am I going to volunteer for organizations, you know? What are the kinds of things am I going to do with my life, okay? Um, Ecclesiastes, there you go, chapter 3, we're going to, it's, it's a long section, so we're going to read it if you're there kind of speaks to many of these things. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate a time to war, and a time of peace. This is kind of a long list, but uh, let, let's face it. Everything has its time and place, okay? And I'm sure if we wanted to sit down and start writing, we could add to this, to this list that God has provided for us. So, um, oops, I forgot to turn pages, sorry. Um, in this scripture, it tells us that there, there's a time for everything. And um, so after we're grown up, after we become adults, what are the things in life that give us purpose? Okay? So let's start with our spouse. Okay? In many relationships, I know it is mine, it is definitely a team effort. And if you had been around our house the past couple weeks, you would, you would see that very, very obviously. 
Mandy is the strongest in places where I am the absolute worst. And those are computers, let's face it. I'd rather take a sledgehammer to a computer, quite honestly, sometimes. And fortunately, Mandy saves me from doing that. Um, but there are so many things that, let's, let's say, look at your relationship. So many things that's got to be done a day in, day out basis that if one of you was not there, how would it get done? Okay? Uh, I would probably have pizza three meals a day, seven days a week or something, you know. Um, or scrambled eggs. I can't make scrambled eggs. But, you know, there's just so many things that, you know, these are Mandy's jobs and, and these are my jobs, okay? And it's just, if, if one of us was gone, things just, com is, is complete chaos, right? Um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 23, go ahead and put it up there. It's Adam and Eve. And the man said, I can't read that back there. And the man said, this one at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman. For she was taken from man. This is why man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife. And they become one flesh. One flesh. You know, this seems to me, and I'll, if maybe if you've observed this too, that when a man loses his wife, and at least it sure seemed like that with my dad and with Mandy's parents as well, that um, it was a lot harder on my dad, I think, than it would have been if my dad would have went first. I, I think my mom just would have been different, you know, uh, it just seems to me like it's a lot harder on men when they lose their wives than the other way around. Um, so in this scenario, we know it at, with Adam and Eve, God took, he put, he put uh, Adam to sleep, and he took a rib, right? And he used that to make Eve, correct? Maybe this has something to do with it. Because if you think of it, <coughs> the woman has a part of, Eve had a part of Adam in her body, all right? And if you, you look at the scenario, God didn't take something off of Adam's head. He didn't take something from his feet. What bones protect the heart? Your ribs. Isn't that cool? I like that. Right there. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Yeah, now I'm preaching to the men. Shouldn't we, shouldn't that be, this is actually the first Bible verse I ever memorized after becoming a Christian. Me and Mandy went to a uh, marriage conference. And this was a focal point of it. And it was the first one I ever I ever read. And it has meant so much to me uh, over my Christian walk and God telling me, take care of your wife. And um, um, <coughs> and you know, we should be, man, it, it, it's hard for me sometimes to, to relate that uh, with God because um, sometimes he tells me to love her, but I'm all supposed to love God. That means my wife has to come second. I don't like that idea, but she understands, <laughs> you know. Um, so with that, with our, with our husband or spouse, our spouses give us purpose, right? If our spouse gets sick, we want to be there for them. You know, if they need something, we want to take care of them, right? So our spouse is one of the things that gives us purpose in our lives. And with my dad, that went away. The next is our children. Have you ever watched a, um, like a National Geographic thing or, you know, nature videos and stuff like that? When you see a, a, a baby um, gazelle or deer born or something like that, then a half hour later the thing is up and running right beside its mom. You ever seen that? That is not us, is it? Human babies need lots and lots of care. 
right, for many, many years. And as parents, that gives us a purpose, to raise up the children right, right? And uh, human babies, we just need a lot of care, okay? Um, Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way they should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Accent on the word old. Not a teenager, not somebody in their 20s. It uses the word old. That means they're a child forever, right? <laughs> you don't, don't, huh? Pretty much, pretty much forever, right? You just can't get rid of them, okay? But our, ro our, our roles as parents change, don't they? You're not raising them anymore, okay? Um, I heard a, a guy say one time, he says, as Christians or as parents, it's not our job to raise great kids. It's our job to raise great adults, all right? Okay, so after our kids become adults, what's our job? Well, it's as a counselor, right? It's to use our experience that we've, our failures and our successes, okay, to counsel our children. Maybe, maybe it's just something as simple as taking the kids for a night, you know, so, they, so the parents can have a night out dinner, okay, a date night, okay? Or maybe it's counseling uh, for for a job change, home repair, investments, you know, things like it, things that we have experience with that we can pass down to our children. See, just when our kids grow up, move out, and get married, parents, we're, we're really not done. We still have a responsibility, okay? And it is one of those things in our life that God gave you experiences not to keep them to yourself. You're supposed to share them with people, and you're supposed to pass those, pass those things along, Okay? That is one of the other things in our life that gives us purpose, okay? And there's, let's face it, experience, there's, there's not a better teacher. Okay, so that's our kids. Now, the next thing is the hard one, our parents. Now, looking at the ages of many of you in here, you know, you may be in this stage, but <coughs> this stage in your life, okay? And uh, I know... Um, that you've heard the, the term, um, the child becomes the parent, and the parent becomes the child. And uh, I did feel this way, that my dad needed more care. He needed to be checked on more often. And let's face it, if you have parents that are in this stage of life, let's, let's face it, sometimes you don't do it for their good, but sometimes you do it for your own peace of mind, right? That you, you want to make sure they're okay. Okay, and you know your parents, they're not going to ask you for your help. My dad was not going to ask me for my help. And uh, I'm sorry, but probably when I get to be that age, I'm probably not going to ask my kids for help either, even though I'm telling myself right now <laughs> that I probably should, right? Um, so we got we to gotta look at those times of life. It is our job. It is our purpose to make sure that our parents are cared for. Let me ask you something. Has anybody here, a little side note, have, have any experience with hospice care? Any experience with people that work in hospice care? Uh, we did with Mandy's dad and a little bit with mine. And I've stood back and I've watched these people. And most of the ones that, that, that we've come across, I, I would say that they are Christians. They are believers in Jesus. And I'll tell you what, doing what they have to do day in, day out, dealing with families and people that are terminally ill, dying, I do not see how you could not have God in your life and not do that job. That just, that just seems to me like one of the hardest jobs in the world to do. But the people that I come across, they are so kind, they are so pleasant, they are so loving. It, it definitely takes a calling from God to do that job without question. And you've got to have Christ in your life to do that. But as far as our jobs is con concerned, uh, 1 Timothy 5.8, but if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, 
He has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That tells us we need to take care of our families, whether it's your parents, your kids, whatever, your grandparents maybe. God commands us, you, it is your job, whether you like them or not, whether you guys get along, maybe you're estranged from them, God's word still tells us to take care of your family and your parents. Okay? So this kind of leads us to the next purpose, is our jobs. Okay? Whether you like it or not, our jobs give, it a pur- give us a purpose and has a purpose for your company for which you work for. If it didn't, then they probably wouldn't have hired you to start with, right? You're needed there. <coughs> Sorry. Um, for ma- any, uh, many of us, this is just uh, provides for all things that we've already mentioned, to help provide for your family, for your kids, for your home. Um, make sure your, your family has, a, has heat, you know, in the wintertime and electric. Uh, but maybe for others of us that really do uh, enjoy your work, maybe it's not the greatest paying job you could get, but it's rewarding, isn't it? Um, with me, I do like farming. And I, all the time, when I have a bad day, I always think, gosh, surely there's something else I could do that I could make a living. And my is going, yes, yes, yeah, cr- yes, Chris, there is. And, and there is, you know. But would I enjoy it? Okay. Um, but the job that you have, it gives you a sense of importance, fulfillment in your life, right? You generally like the people w- you work with. You know, maybe, maybe even at your job, you become a mentor to a younger person. Or maybe somebody that you work with, you know, mentors you, okay? There's a lot of other things you can get from your job than just a paycheck. Okay. Uh, Ecclesiastes 2.24 says this, There is nothing better for a person than to eat, drink, and enjoy his work. I have seen that even this is from God's hand. Have you ever thanked God for the job you have? We need to. How about thanking him for the good health to be able to go do it, right? And we need to. God gave you the job. Now, that doesn't mean he won't give you a different one next year, right? Or have you changed jobs? But there's a lot of things in our job that God puts you there in that place of business for a reason, okay? And we need to be aware of that on our jobs. So where does this leave us? You see, I, I realized that over those nine years, that to keep us going, to give us a reason, to basically get out of bed every morning, there's only one thing left after everything else has been taken away. And that is what God has for us. You see, our health will get to the point where we can't work anymore. Our kids will grow up to the point where they really don't need us anymore as much as they did, okay? But what I realized that my dad did not have is God. And as Christians, God needs to be the center of our purpose, not the only thing left after everything else is gone. Do you get it? Because we feel, we are really good at filling our time with stuff, aren't we? Sorry, I don't mean to be spitting into you. Um, now I can't hear me at all. But what we're messing up is, is that everything that we do, our jobs, our vacation time, raising our kids, all these things going shopping, God needs to be the center of it, okay? If we, we shouldn't approach our jobs, well, i got to go to work to make money so that my kids have school stuff or, or whatever it is, okay? We really need to be looking at opportunities. How do I show Jesus to the people that I work with? Because you work with plenty of people that 
that don't know Jesus, do, do you? Right? Everybody's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're thinking of them right now, and you're thinking, yes, I can't pray for that person. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do, right? And um, Mark uh, 16, 15. Then he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And this is not just meant for pastors. It's not just meant for uh, missionaries that go overseas. Okay? He's talking to his disciples here, but it's meant for all of us. It's, it's meant for all of us that believe in Jesus Christ. And that everywhere we go and in everything that we do, we need to reflect him that, that he needs to be our purpose. Okay? And that this needs to start with him not be just what's left over. I have heard it say that I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, I don't completely disagree with that. But what we got to keep in mind is, is that our churches, this one and others, churches provide the opportunity to serve to give us purpose, all right, to, to learn, okay, and to worship him, okay? And yes, you can be a Christian outside of coming to a church building, but I think it's very important, very important to be a part of a congregation because you just never know who God's going to put in your path, right? Um, let's everybody... Everybody turn in your Bibles. This, this is not up there. It's not going to be up there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 is where we're going to start. If you're using a pew Bible, uh, it's on page 14. It's on page 1,041 is where it is in your pew Bible if you want to follow along. Okay? So what does the word purpose even mean? The dictionary defines purpose as the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. That is the dictionary's definition. So we ask the question, why do we exist? Why were we created? I'm sorry just thinking of that girl that we just prayed for. I'm sorry. Um, you know, that's probably the most asked question of all mankind, regardless of your religion, regardless of your culture, right? Why am I here? And what we've got to realize as Christians, it is always to bring glory to God. I told everybody to turn there, and I didn't do it myself. That's pretty bad, isn't it? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. As for the body is one and has many members, but all the members of the one body being many are one body so also is Christ for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body whether Jews or Greeks whether slaves or free and have all been and have all been to drink of one spirit for in fact the body is not one member but many if the foot said to would say because I am not a hand I am not of the body is therefore not of the body and if the ear should say because I am not an eye am I not of the body is it therefore not the body if the whole body were an eye where would the hearing be if the whole if the whole were hearing where would the smelling be but now God has set members each of them in the body just as he pleased 
And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem the weaker are necessary. Another translation that I really liked used the word indispensable. Go to your next slide there. The Romans. That's not Romans. Romans 10. There you go. 10, 15. How beautiful are the feet who bring good news. Um, praise team, go ahead and come on up, please. I know this is going to seem silly, but please play along. Everybody look at your feet. Okay, everybody look at your feet. Don't look at me, look at your feet, because if you're looking at me, you're not looking at your feet. That's how I know. Everybody look at your feet. Okay? Now, I know this is silly, but, but play along, please. Okay? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. There's a pastor in Preble County. He has two of these, just like what you're looking at. And uh, one November evening in 1996, at about 9 o'clock in the evening, he used his two feet to carry himself into my house, to mine and Mandy's house. And at 1 o'clock the next morning, Mandy and I, he led us to uh, accept Jesus Christ as our Savior at our kitchen table. I was so glad that he didn't have to leave at 11. And he stayed there till 1 o'clock. And then he, he was a bivocational pastor. He had to get up and go to work the next day. That man's name was Brian Ray. and He, he still pastors a church at Bridgeview Baptist still today. But one of his favorite sayings was, keep looking at your feet. Keep looking at your feet. One of his favorite sayings was, if you are a big toe in the body of Christ, be the best big toe you can be. And you may say, says you may not be the head, you may not be the eye, or a leg, or an arm, or even the foot. But think about what it would be like if you didn't have a big toe. Would you limp? Maybe it's your job in the body of Christ to help somebody else not limp along, or maybe walk a little faster. You see, with my dad, all these things were slowly, all of his purposes were slowly taken away. And I pray for you in your Christian walk that you'll never lose your purpose. Because the reason you're still here and God is not taking you home is because he still has something for you to do. And the only thing that God's waiting on is for you to be obedient to him, right? Our last verse, Psalms, right? Yeah, 57.2. Everybody read. I call to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose in me. It's his purpose. And our purpose should be to live, love, and glorify him in everything that we do. And me thinking about, <coughs> you know, what my dad went through and watching all that, it's really made me change how I think about um, you know, my life, what I'm going to be doing when I get older, and to make sure that I'm active and that I'm doing God's will in my life and not mine alone.
thank you for allowing me to share this with you. It's been a long time coming, and I have fretted over it, and I, I didn't melt down into a puddle of goo on the floor here, so I guess I, I lived through it. But uh, think about this. Pray over it. His purpose for me. We need to ask him. We need to be in prayer over that. Thank you for your time. Okay. At this time, let's all stand. The altars are open. If anyone would like to come pray or maybe talk to Chris about anything.